Good evening and welcome to the September 4th Queen Anne's County Public School Board meeting. Open session. Can I get a motion to resume open session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Respect. Pursuant to the general provisions, Articles 3-05 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction and other personal matters that affect one or more specific individuals. We also met to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice and to conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to the negotiations. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay. Aye. Can I get, <laughs> that was quiet. Aye. I was like, wow. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the August 7th closed and open session as presented? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the August 20th closed session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. One of our favorite parts are the awards. Good evening. The first award is the Energizer Bunny Award. This award is presented to a staff member who keeps going and going and is sponsored by Bayview Financial, Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys, if you'll please come forward. This month's winner is nominated by Miss Becky Tubman, principal at Graysonville Elementary School, if she'll please come forward, and her assistant principal, Dan and Jones. The September Energizer Bunny Award is presented to Miss Sherry Turner. Sherry Turner brings a contagious enthusiasm to the role of the admin secretary at Graysonville Elementary School. This enthusiasm is evident in her interactions with staff, students, and parents alike. Her positive attitude not only enhances the morale of our office, but also contributes to creating a welcoming and supportive atmosphere for the school. Sherry approaches each task with a sense of eagerness and commitment, reflecting her genuine passion for supporting the school community. One of Sherry's most commendable traits is her unwavering willingness to go above and beyond her regular duties. Whether it's staying late to ensure an urgent issue is resolved or volunteering to assist with an additional project, Sherry consistently demonstrates a proactive and solution-oriented approach. Her readiness to tackle any challenges that arise and to help colleagues without hesitation is truly appreciated. In summary, Sherry is an invaluable asset to our school. Her enthusiasm, willingness to exceed expectations and exemplary work ethic significantly contributes to the overall success at GES. Congratulations. The next award is our Spirit Award. This Spirit Award is given to an individual who embodies the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. The September Award has again been nominated by their principal and vice principal at Graysonville Elementary School. And the September Spirit Award is presented to Miss Kristen Tyree. Tyree.
Kristen is a very supportive, kind, and compassionate pre-kindergarten teacher assistant who works with students here at Graysonville Elementary School. Kristen demonstrates professionalism in her duties and strives for excellence no matter how big or small the request. In every task, she exhibits enthusiasm, excellence, and a positive attitude. She is always willing to address any need or challenge. As witnessed by her fellow colleagues, she goes the extra mile to ensure the success of every student. Through effective collaboration with teachers and staff, she helps create a safe, supportive, and welcome environment for all students. Kristen's efforts do not go unnoticed, and this Spirit Award recognizes her contributions to the GES school and community. So congratulations, Kristen. next awards are our Shining Star Awards. This award is presented to individuals in our school system who shine. We have three winners this evening for the month of September, all nominated by Kevin Kintop, the Arise Administrator and Coordinator of our summer school programming. Actually put these over here. The first winner is Mrs. Elizabeth Haroff. Haroff. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth has been a consistent member of the Title I funded summer enrichment program over the years. Her willingness to come in during the summer and provide students with opportunities to not only avoid the summer slide, but to increase their academic muscles and engage in alternative activities is so much appreciated. This year, she worked at Graysonville Elementary School summer program as she has done for several years now. We thank her and the dozens of teachers and support staff who helped us provide opportunities for students at Graysonville Elementary School, as well as Churchill Elementary School, Sellers Elementary School and Sellersville Middle School. Congratulations and thank you for all you did this summer. <laughs> the second winner is Miss Amanda Shuckart. Hopefully I'm saying that one correctly. She is outstanding, reliable member of the Summer Migrant Program. Each year, we provide summer opportunities for Kent and Queen Anne's County migrant students. This state-granted grant-funded program is open to children from birth to young adults, providing educational opportunities in the summer to help keep students progressing. She has a long history of working in the baby room for the program, and she is one of several folks who come back each and every year to help our migrant students. We thank her and everyone for their commitment to this very specialized program. Congratulations and thank you. And the third winner this evening is Mrs. Lori Janda. Lori joined the Queen Anne's County Public School team as an, as an administrator at Kent Island High School starting July 1 and dove right in. <laughs> when summer school started on July 8th, she was the only administrator in the building for that week. With support from Mr. Rafter and from Mr. Kintop, she was able to get all of the students up and running in the Kent Island High School Summer Credit Recovery Program. Yes, she did that. And, <laughs> In essence, in the four-week program, it basically became her responsibility each and every day. She took on that responsibility and did an amazing job with it throughout the whole summer. She is perfect, a perfect example of what many administrators and 12-month support staff take on during the summer months. While there is plenty to do each summer, closing out one year and preparing for the next, many, many folks also handle the day-to-day -day responsibilities, either directly or indirectly, of the summer programs. So we thank Mrs. Janda and all the school and central office staff that helped make these summer programs possible. Congratulations and thank you.
congratulations again. Sorry. 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 <laughs> Swinging around there. Okay. <laughs> Before we get started um, with all the board involvement, I would like to introduce our brand new student uh, board members uh, from Queen Anne's County. We have Miss Smith, um, Ariana, is that correct? Yep. So welcome. Um, and, we also, and I'll let you talk in just one second because we also have Miss Schrader from Ken Island. So welcome. And if you'd like to say a few words, whatever you'd like to say, you feel free. Um, hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Ariana Smith. I'm a senior at Queen Anne's County High School and I'm proud to be representing my school and fellow students here at the Board of Ed. Just some general exciting updates. Um, we're exploring the possibility of adding an electrical program to our CTE department. Um, the National English, English Honor Society, which I am a part of, is sponsoring Alliance Free Library, which started second semester of last year and was very successful. Um, September 16th and 17th are underclassmen picture days, and then the 26th and 27th are senior portraits. Powderpuff Games October 10th, Homecoming Pep Rally and Dance is October 11th, Parades October 12th, and so is the football game. Right on. Hit it the ground running. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Naomi Schrader from Canal High School. That introduction was kind of hard to top, but I'm, I've, been, I've been very excited to be here ever since I went to the convention with all the different board members from Maryland, the student board members. And I wanted to reflect on, we had a senior sunrise the first day of school. That was really exciting. We, all the parents, they got us together. They were like, it was so generous. They bought us like the coffee truck and set up everything up. It was awesome. Um, I don't have all the dates for everything like she did. But um, this Friday, we have our first home football game where we have the veteran appreciation theme of USA and fall play auditions start next week. And yeah, the start of the school year has been great and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Okay, so board involvement, who would like to? I'm good. Okay. I'll, I'll start off. Um, well, everybody, welcome back to school. Uh, we're having to have a great year. <laughs> uh, but one thing I would like to address, which has been a big issue, is our budget. Uh, we have some tough times. If you look on page 19, we were over optimistic on our retirement and what our uh, budget was going to be with our salaries to our teachers. Um, that's something that we have to have a balanced budget and you do what you do with the money you're given. A couple things I do want to express. The county gave us $6.2 million worth of new money. $6.2 million. That's a lot of money compared to most years. That's seven million over maintenance effort. If the state had done one third of that, we wouldn't have this problem. So it's nice to talk to the county, it's nice to do this, but the state is not fulfilling their obligations. I question blueprint. Mm -hmm. I really question blueprint. Queen Anne's County, when I talk to people, people come to Queen Anne's County because of our school system, because of you all and what we do for our students. We don't need the state telling us everything to do, but they are, and they're mandating stuff that we cannot afford to do without making some hard decisions. And it, it's tough. I mean, I can go over things, dual enrollment and everything else we, we're, we're obligated to do, but the state is not fulfilling their obligations. And you know, the county and the taxpayers of Queen Anne's County are, in my opinion, funding this board adequately. It's have to make cuts because the state is mandating things that are unfunded. And it's putting us in a bad position. It's putting you all in a bad position because we respect everybody and want to keep everybody. But our hands are also tied because by state law, the superintendent has to give us a balanced budget and we have to approve a balanced budget. And uh, we're going to work this out. It's going to be tough, and I guarantee you people aren't going to be happy. Thank you. Shannon? I'm good. 
Well, just to piggyback on Dick, I also wanted to say that this board was presented with three budget scenarios. One was for 12.4 million, which would just let us keep everybody whole, including all of our grant positions. Um, we were also then given a, a 9.7 million and a 5 million. Those were our three options. We um, received word that the commissioners would not approve. They were not inclined to approve the 12.4. So we asked for $9.7 million. That would have kept everybody on board except, and even a few of the grant positions, but the grant positions would have been gone, which we've been saying for three years, years. that they were going away. But they did not give us the amount that we asked for. We asked for 9.7, they gave us 5 million. So then we went back and asked again. We said, we've got to have more, and they gave us an additional 1.2 million. So we've asked the commissioners twice for the 9.7 million, and we've been not given that amount two times. So we have asked them. Um, they've given us $7 million over the maintenance of effort, which is more than we've ever received. And as Mr. Um, Smith said, these are very tough times with the state, and we always encourage people in January to go to the assembly and you know, tell them, you've got to give these counties uh, more money. We are not the only one. Blueprint is hitting every county in, in Maryland. So that's all I have to say. Dr. Salins. Yes. So actually, I prepared a statement because I would like to update the board and take a few moments of what's transpired um, since we met most recently at our August 20th board. So the executive team has requested to meet with the union on five occasions, August 23rd. 26th, 27th, 28th, and September 3rd. However, the union has failed to meet or offer a viable time to meet to continue discussions on the use of furlough days for the 24-25 school year. We specifically articulated to them, the purpose of the meeting would be to include sharing information from the board's directive, what additional measures have been taken to mitigate the budget shortfall, and what next steps need to take place as it relates to furloughs and the reduction in force. We have to date responded to all of their requests from the Public Employee Relations Act, which I will let you know was 10 various different data pools that does take time and we just started school. So we have to have a balance there. It is required, as Mr. Smith said, that I have to have a balanced budget. And in light of that shortfall, the board has no other choice but today to move forward with continuing the process of RIFs. The contractual 35-day letter expires on September 18th, and on September 19th, the RIF letters will go out to impacted employees whose last day of employment will be September 30th. The furlough process has been used in the past to mitigate budget shortfalls. Most recently in 2012, prior to me being here, there was a budget shortfall that was very similar where they used six furlough days um, to meet the budget needs. We can all agree that time is of the essence and when dealing with these types of decisions that we know Im really impact our employees' livelihoods. Yet tomorrow marks seven weeks since the union was notified on July 18th of potential furloughs. We are hopeful that the union would move to seek input from all of their staff members before rejecting the proposal of the MOU, which had the furloughs in it. We were hopeful in July during our negotiations, we met a couple of times and we were hoping that at this point we will have mitigated this and had a collective you know, response for the dates that we had collaboratively chosen together um, for furloughs and even took their suggestion as it relates to a retirement incentive. But in the absence of that lack of collaboration, continued collaboration, the union just leaves us no other choice but to move forward with the RIF process. <clears throat> Okay, anything else? All right, we come to our public comment piece. Ms. Bent. And we ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, include their phone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. 
If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. First on the list, Mr. Richard McNeil. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the new school year. I know that you have a lot on your plate, so let me just share a couple things. Um, Richard McNeil, I live in Centerville, I'm the president of the retired uh, school personnel. Uh, just to let you know, we, we had a, um, I don't have to go to school breakfast on the first day of school. And collectively, that was 1,564 first days of school in that room. Uh, so we had a great time. and. Uh, they, I think Denny's, I have to thank them for allowing us to overtake their restaurant. And we were there for a little over three hours just having a great time and so forth. So just that. Also to let you know, we now have eight members who are over 90 years old who are still active in our retirement group. So uh, working in education gives you long life, I guess. Maybe some gray hairs, but long life. Um, also, just a couple shout outs to, uh, I, I, I know what it takes to get a school going. And sometimes the support staff uh, doesn't get enough credit for getting these buildings ready. Um, and I just want to say thanks to all of them for that. Also, uh, if you've never been in uh, Centerville between 9 and, uh, excuse me, 8.30 and 9, uh, 8.45, Get a cup of coffee, stand on the corner, and watch the buses weave through town. It's just amazing how Sid Pender, uh, I'll give him credit for that, uh, <laughs> to get the elementary buses across town and, and, and switching. Also, I'd like to thank Teresa and, and HR. She is wonderful with helping current retirees get through the maze of all the paperwork to get your pension and get your health package and so forth. Um, one of the things I'd, I'd like the board to think about uh, in the midst of everything else, uh, there's going to be an ALS walk in October to support one of our uh, former members who is going through that. Uh, it's October 20th uh, out in uh, the 4-H Park. Uh, please consider maybe uh, coming out on that Sunday and supporting uh, this individual. I won't use her name. I don't have permission for that, but a lot of you know who that is. A uh, longtime employee. Uh, and retired uh, from, from the school system. And I know that you have uh, a lot, as, as Mr. Smith said, and, and so forth. I go to the meetings uh, for the retirement group in the legislature and reading the blueprint that started about three or four years ago, uh, I questioned them at that time, how is this going to be funded? And it's, it's, it's like a lot of good ideas, but it just doesn't make sense in terms unless you've got the money to support the programs. And, um, you know, I, I applaud the county commissioners for what they've done. It's up to the state now to, to do their job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cecilia Mitchell. I'm Cecilia Mitchell. I'm the president of the Queen Anne's County Education Association. Before I start my prepared remarks, I need to say two things and hope that I do not run out of time. First, the pride in our staff, what we hold for each other, and nothing that you heard today could have happened without the dedication and professionalism of that support staff. Our buildings cannot run without them. Second, and it's going to take a lot of time, some of what Dr. Salins I take issue with. And that conversation is for another time and place. Right, and we're not supposed to be naming okay. individuals during no, your I'm public sorry. comment time. I'm just, yes, thank you. I take issue with some of that, those comments. We are here in solidarity to demonstrate our concern for the matter in which this Board of Education and Dr. Salins are attempting to solve the financial, financial crisis on the backs and even the livelihoods of employees and students. 
Our questions remain unchanged as they remain unanswered. What have you done to solve this problem before taking the extreme and the solution of last resort furloughs and reductions in force? <clears throat> What have you removed from your operating budget to resolve and reduce the impact on employees and students before they need to make adjustments to their home operating budgets? The county commissioners have a statutory obligation to fund public schools. On August 1st, a request was made for an additional $1,376,216 that was subsequently withdrawn. Why that withdrawal? Why that refusal? The lack of transparency. The reluctance to answer questions contribute to the sense of financial disarray and or <coughs> mismanagement. As the stewards of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, you have an obligation to promote excellence in the system and ensure proper resources for it. Yet now, you have threatened the livelihoods of the people you employ through rifts, which will also have a negative impact on each and every classroom in this county, impairing effective instruction of students denying hands-on support or small group instruction for students that need it the most, and it will have further impacts from the maintenance of buildings and equipment. You have made, you make these decisions, and not once have you spoken us to, and I'm speaking to the board, not just Dr. Sa not Dr. Salens, have you spoken to us directly in an effort to allow the union to engage as a partner in finding alternative solutions to your financial problems? Um, I lost my place. We are entitled to a seat at the table for discussion, including the discussion of who and how many employees may be rift and to what result. We ask and ask and ask. There is much, much more that needs to be said, but let me close with this. You may be defaulting on your responsibility to advocate for our schools, but we will not. We are pursuing all relative legal avenues, which started with our formal request for information documentation relating to the current situation and most recently our request to the Maryland Office of the Inspector General for Education to investigate the financial affairs of this Board of Education. person is, I'm not going to butcher the last name, Amanda? Oh, that's me, D'Onofrio. Okay. That's me, nobody, no other Amandas with difficult last names? Nope. Okay, I'm no, usually the only one. <laughs> Hello, pleasure to meet you. My name is Amanda. I came here name and as a mother. Oh, yeah. We with... need your address as well. For your, oh, you your need address. my address? Name and address, yes. It's just for public comment, yes. Okay. Um, my phone just the number is yeah, city. yeah, yeah, not your yeah, not your street address. Just where you're from, Centerville. Eight five zero. No, 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 no. Centerville or Cent Centerville. Oh. Yes, okay. Centerville. Okay. I'm like I wrote information down there. Okay. Um, I'm not sure when my three minutes starts, and I didn't prepare. Uh, you haven't started yet. So um, I didn't prepare anything, so I'm just going to speak freely. Um, I came up here from Newport News. That is the school district where the teacher was shot last year. And I worked in that school district and I could see a lot of dysfunction and chaos. But I chose when my husband was going to be stationed here in Maryland to come to this county for its educational opportunities for my children so that they could have the very best. And while I have seen their teachers and their principal and their support staff step up every day and give their best. I have seen things and heard things that make me question the board and their accountability. And when I come in here, sometimes I think perception is everything. Right now, you sit above me, looking down on me while I speak to you. But you work for the community. You work for the taxpayers. You work to ensure that this community stays the community that I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a home to live in so that my kids could get the best education. So when I see a school board building being built over by the YMCA and I question that and the answer is it comes from a different budget, it upsets me because one, I am a military family and I work on a budget, but two, 
why can't we ask for the money to be moved where it does the most good? And if that could only go towards construction, why is it going to be building a new building for the Board of Education and not to be getting high school students out of trailers that they're learning on on their campuses? Why isn't it going to outfitting buildings with more hygienic water filling stations for the students to get water through the day? Why isn't it going towards something that supports the students and teachers who shape and mold the future of our country? Because everything needs to come back and benefit them. And I hear what you're saying, and a lot of it sounds to me like excuses. Talk to the state. I do talk to the state. I talk to a lot of people and I read a lot of things, but if the money is in the wrong budget and you know teachers and support staff are gonna be fired, why aren't we asking how we can move the money of our government to where it best serves our community? Because the best service to our community for that money is not a building. The best service is providing our children with the support that helps them when they're behind on their reading because of COVID and its effects. Because I worked with kids who couldn't read and it is sad to sit with a group of adults and discuss and have to narrow down which children you can help because you can't help them all, because there aren't enough of you, because it's not getting funded, despite casinos supposedly running in and providing money for these things. And I can write people, but I really think if we're gonna have a building budget and it can only be used towards building, it should be towards building something for the students and the teachers first. Joan Spence. Good afternoon. My name Good is afternoon. Joan. I just moved here because I was told this is the best school system. And I have 10 grandchildren. And I figure, boy, when I saw the, the ladies protesting, the gentlemen protesting, I said, I got to come and talk. Number one. The, pre the, the president should give teachers the, the highest paid. That's what I think. The president of the United States should give the teachers the highest paid. Without teachers, there's no president, there's no lawyers, there's no nurses, there's no doctors. I don't understand. I just don't understand. And then for these poor people here, getting furloughed in this hard time? It's not right. I would like to go and talk to whoever the president is. <laughs> I, I mean, I understand you have to do what you have to do. Sorry, I understand you have to do what you have to do. But to, um, I pray God, if I were the president, you would get the best paid, the highest paid, because without teachers, there is no president. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So I went city are you from? I city? live right here. Centerville. Centerville. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. All right, no other public comment. Let's move on. The HR report. Make a motion. We approve HR report as submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page there. All right, Dr. Schreckengost. Welcome. Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. My name is Jennifer Schreckengost. I am a supervisor of curriculum and instruction, and I'm here this evening to request approval of um, a, entering into a contract with Smart Start Education to provide tutors for our Title I schools using Title I funds. Can I ask a quick question about the Title I monies? Um, are, is it able to be used to hire staff or is it just contracts? Like, would, could we use it to hire? It, it is also used to hire staff. Okay. Um, so, I really have an issue with this one. Um, 
we're in open session. This is $356,000. When you do the math, comes uh, five hours a day by the calendar that's posted on here, it's 136 days. It comes out to $2,623 a day or $525 an hour. Now I know we just let reading a math specialist go and this seems kind of like a slap in the face. Um, so this is gonna be a no for me. I, if we can hire staff, I don't understand why we're gonna now source out $356,000 for seven months and we let staff go. That's, that doesn't sit well with me. I understand. No, no Title I staff has been released. So but we still let reading and, and math specialists go that maybe were part-time and supported some of these Title I schools, correct? They were not paid with Title I funds. They were paid with our operating budget funds. Okay. Yeah, so these Remember are- we're saying we could use Title I funds. So we, we could we could not use Title I funds to do reading and math specialists because that would be supplanting because we're doing it for all schools, but then we're having Title I funds just pay for certain schools, so you can't do that. So all of the reading and math specialist positions that were in the budget were in our operating budget, not our Title I budget. So we can't hire tutors with this money? We can't. That's what we're planning on doing is but hiring But an tutors. outside company, I'm talking about like part-time teachers who would want to come back because some of our, this, you know, reading and math specialists were. The, the way this Title I fund works, it has to be spent by September 30th of this year. But it says it's from fiscal we year have to 2024 enter a carryover funds. We can enter it into a contract before September 30th. If the people were on our payroll, we could only pay them through September 30th. Okay. That's, that's where it ties our hands. So up until last Tuesday, the state was telling us that we could use this money through next September. And they said, oh no, we, that's, that's not right. You can only spend it till September 30th. So we could either enter into a contract and pay that because we have that con contract, which is encumbered monies in that budget, or we can give the money back to the state, which, which is an option. So, so to be kind of poor Dr. Schreckenhaus, I know this is not your, this is not your, um, your mess on that we're asking these questions, but so if the state had said that we could have used that money till through next September, we could have rehired some of our specialists yeah, for those schools, it, yeah, for those Title is, I schools? Because it has to be sent by the end of this September. Well, no, I'm saying if they um, had let us use that money up through, we thought we could use up through the next September. It would have only been for Title I schools. Right, but we could have used it for that year if the state hadn't Correct. put that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and, Another thing and part of it was that the, the NOGO, which is your Notice of Grant Award, um, was really very dysfunctional at the state level. We didn't get it till so late that that's why we have carryover money because we couldn't, we couldn't spend money that we didn't have, you know, a NOGA that says you can spend the money, which is a, a Notice of Grant Award, a NOGA. So we didn't have that. We didn't get that till so late in the school year that it created this um, pretty much like a little balance in there and that they're saying, hey, you, you got to pay by this you got to use it and pay it by this point by September of this year. And so we do have the option. We can, you know, if the board so chooses not to vote for this, we would just essentially send the money back to the state and they would use it and reappropriate however they see fit. Smart Start Education. Do they have employees or do they contract out to? They're their employees. They have their employees. So they, would, they wouldn't be looking for people in this area. They're going to bring, I mean... I, you know, we're Queen Anne's County. I mean, I always hear like with the consortium and special ed, we don't have a lot of things over here. So we have to go across the bridge. Well, would they be, if we can ask them, look, we have pools of people in this area. Yeah. We'd rather you hire we could locally that. if you yeah. can. I'm and not they, saying you can make anybody I mean, do I, it. I will say too, this, this company, part of the reason we're bringing this up now is the TSI money that Ken Island High School received last school year. We had this contract at Ken Island High School um, in January, and, and the school has been happy with the tutors that they received that you all approved that, that budget or that contract in January. So this is kind of a continuation of that. Like Dr. Salen said, we didn't get the NOGA till January, so we couldn't really spend this Title I money last year. Now here we are. Um, we didn't feel like it was in the best interest to buy stuff, buy $300,000 worth of paper and pencils. I appreciate what you're saying, Ms. Ms. Capes, but um, to be able to provide extra tutoring to our Title I schools, we felt like this would be a better use of that money than giving it back. Does this state 
run or federal? Federal. It's federal through the state. Through the state. Mm -hmm. And that's it's, the complication. It's accepted, right. It's accepted. It's, it's federal money that gets shifted to MSDE and then comes to us through MSD. So, you know, this is just an, another instance it is. of the state not knowing what the hell they're doing. Absolutely. 100%. So, for example, with fiscal year 24, that began in July of 23, though the money was not granted until January, halfway through the yeah, fiscal we year. Spend it all. So when we receive fiscal year 25, which we haven't yet, absolutely, they, positions could be created in Title I schools, mm -hmm. additional positions, if principals choose to use their budget in that way, but we haven't received that money yet. So now, instead of us monitor they're forced us to go out for a contract so it's prepaid yes that's exactly right mm -hmm. so when do we think it, we'll get the money for tw the next year we're thinking again <laughs> some, probably in January so right? optimistic and I'm learning all the nuances of this certainly but um, I'm hope hopeful before January but also knowing what has happened in the past I think that Chrissy Webster our grant specialist who is amazing and the title one principals and I have a have a good plan to ensure we don't end up in this situation again just I'm wondering if we can shorten this contract. If we're anticipating money in January, can we shorten the contract in anticipation of maybe hiring some of our... What we could do is add to what we already have using this money. I don't know that we would want to shorten it because then we're going to have still a pot of money there that we didn't spend. Right. So, and yeah, this but we is can add to it. Mm. Yeah. So this is just for everybody out there who thinks, I want to say openly, that we mismanage the budget. Our hands are tied with this kind of stuff. Would I rather give this to a teacher? Yes. Would I want to not pay a contract? But when the state gives us money and then says, oh, wait, by the way, we made a mistake. You, yeah, and you can't spend it until you actually get the NOGA. That's right. This is not the first time. I mean, this has been, we've been chattering about this um, consistently at my level that MSDE has had some um, own of their concerns with staffing um, and, and leadership over the last four years. And it has created significant problems, not just here, but um, all That's of our title grants. State. All of our title grants. Well, let me ask you a yeah. question. You understand it. Mabe understands it. The biggest union in the in the or association in the, in the state is the teachers. Do they understand it? I mean, there are people oh, no. that are trying because this is stuff that we need to get straight. That, that is just to me absurd to have to spend it because it's going to run out and can't use it where we want it. It's our lo if it's our local money. If we're if we're not performing well, I guarantee you, come on in here, get us out of here. But our school is a good system. We're in the top percentage all the time. We have good people, and then they sit there and. You know, it's it's not as easy as people think. It's not. You know, not that we don't make mistakes. Don't get me wrong there. I can see some of them, but God damn. So if I understand it right, bottom line is we cannot hire anybody. This money has to be, since they've changed it, we have to spend it by September or lose it. Right, we have to engage. Right. This is a way. Is this using all of it? And I'm, okay. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> no, no. We don't do it. It's not a it's question not. and answer. No, no, yeah. You can write. You certainly can write um, the oh, board with concerns. Okay. <laughs> Happy to have it. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions about this? No. Can I get a motion? Motion. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Make motion to approve Smart Start Education through Title I funds for a total of three hundred and fifty six thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars and thirty two cents. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's going to be a no for me. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Schreckengast. Okay. Ms. Gast. Hello, President Bennett, uh, Dr. Salings, members of the board, executive team. My name is Whitney Gast. I'm the CFO for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Today, I present to you a budget amendment for our capital budget for our prior year budget. Um, the county provides us capital funds for a number of capital projects throughout the year. And FY 2022, the capital projects that the county had funded for BOE was um, incorrectly omitted from our official budget. Um, by amending the FY25 budget, we will have the correct budget authority in order to spend the prior year funds of our capital funds that were approved by the county. Okay, I just yes. have a question. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, not sure. I, I'm not sure I really understand this. Okay. So you're saying that the, the projects themselves, the names were omitted or the money was omitted? We, or? So what really happened is the county attempted to appropriate it to us, right? It was in the county's budget in FY22 for these capital projects. We did not include a capital project 
budget in our budget in FY22. So therefore, we don't technically have the proper budget authority to spend it, even though the county was attempting to give us those funds. So by amending, making an amendment for the prior years, we have the correct budget authority that we can spend those funds. Those funds were always there. So the, that's the big The budget thing. book that was presented, hold your budget book up for the board. So in FY25, right? So that budget book that's presented every year in 2022 did not have that back capital sheet in there. We had the permission from the commissioner to spend. We had all the paperwork on Sid's side to spend, but it wasn't in that book and the board approved that book. So without being approved in that book, then we don't have the authority to actually spend and do those projects. So we have a project from 22 that we don't have the authority. Yes. Okay. And so now the we're just money though, that. it was still with the, the county's money. Sure. Yes. Yeah. And this is all, this is all the all county's capital. money. Yeah, this, this is all, all Yep. This is all capital. This is all the county's money. Do you have and that sheet now? I'm sorry, yes. 2024? Well, 25, she updated it. 25, so okay. Yep, and right. so the amendment that's in front of you, so um, we worked with the county to get the pri the balance of all the prior year projects that we had outstanding. What is that total? <coughs> um, the total for the prior years was um, 13. The 2022, yeah. Um, so, and this was just for all prior years, the balance brought forward. So it was 13,189,709. 13,000? 13, no, 13 million. Million, million. sorry. Sorry, I apologize, 13 million. I just asked, okay. 13 million. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> I look for my laminated. Yes. It was approved by the county. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was in there. We submitted this to the county. Yes. I had to submit it to them because they didn't yes. know where they get their numbers from. Right, and that was just the, this is really just the final crossing that So the only thing that you're telling me is, we One just page didn't. was left out of budget book that mm -hmm. we approved, but, it, but it's already been approved in 22, 23, which, yep. cause mm -hmm. that, that's a moving target yes. sometimes. Yes. The county officially approved all of these funds. They know about it. This was just finalized, like making sure that it's correctly in our okay. approved budgets as well. And they are capital up. funds yes. for buildings and things, not monies that can be used for salaries or hiring or any other things. So none of this money was spent in 2022 or it Correct. was? Correct. Um, these are the remaining balances. So these were not spent yet. So why, why did it take this long to figure out that this was 2022 and we're now in 2024? Yes. Yeah, because we're yeah. transitioning. I, d I don't think that that's been, you know, anything that's been hidden from anybody. We had a CFO who left. We transitioned by having um, Dr. Kibler in place for a little bit to just add that layer of leadership while we took us a year to find a CFO. And now that CFO is going back and making sure that we have all the appropriate documentation. So that, that's a great question. And it was missed by that the former CFO um, during that year yeah. when it was brought to the board. And so Ms. Gass is simply trying to correct it to make right. sure that moving forward it's it's good and we have the proper oh. documentation i do have a question about the community-based okay. health nurse expansion was that that was building a uh, building the rooms or what's the yeah, it's, it, it's actually taking kind of renovating okay. the space like we okay. did at um churchill sure, elementary okay. school and Sellersville elementary okay. school and, and minor repairs yeah. too. and then just to, everything that was in 25 was approved for 25 as well right. so yes there's two columns on here but just an fyi That's okay Yes. I mean, Dr. Kibler was just filling in to, to, to try to get some information straight on people. So I, you know, that, that I don't have a problem with. What I do want to make clear, and hopefully I'm clear, is all this was done, because we do, our, our capital budget's a, a three to five year work, and it Correct. moves sometimes, it's a, it's a moving target. Because I mean, you take in here to Queen Anne's County uh, High School roof at 4.9 million, mm -hmm. that's just getting done this year. Mm -hmm. Right. So. You know, I understand this stuff. So all this stuff was approved. The only, I mean, it, it's because I don't blame people for questioning what we're doing. Oh, right. Because I, because I, we I look either. like sometimes we don't know what we're doing. But so all you're telling me is this page was just left out of the back of the book. Everything else yes. is done properly. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I think it's important. You approve a capital improvement plan. Right. The county appropriates the money each individual contract you also approve it's literally this one page yeah. that was in the because, I mean, we talk about capital yeah. all the time and you know then we go to the commissioners to find out are you going to fund it this year or not and if it's in if it's in the in the range or what because a lot of this capital stuff 
as an estimate. I mean, our roof, I think, and maybe Mr. Pender could say, you know, we were up to, what, 10, 11 million and it came back down. But during COVID, we, I think we pushed mm. that back because we were two we, or three million over, weren't that, we? That is correct. We did push Central it back. Central office is $3 million on the budget right now. more money to accomplish that project. Right. So, I mean, you know, a lot of moving parts here. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the 2025 capital budget amendment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Ms. Gass. Um, next is our budget category transfers. Yes, next up. So once again, I'm requesting approval for budget transfers between the major funding categories to close out the financial statement records for FY24. Um, typically, these budget transfers happen throughout the year. So, and that was, as I'm transitioning into this role and getting more used to it, I, I do apologize that these were not presented to you earlier. However, <laughs> in order for us to properly close out our books for 24, we have to make the transfers between the different categories to zero out. Got a couple of questions. Yes, absolutely. Student health services. Where are you, yes, which number are you on? I'm on number nine, category nine, 1,000. Okay. The new, the new one she ended up, right? Okay. No. No. This one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the one from this week. I have yes. from July 30th. Okay. We're $262,000 in the hole on that one. Where are our salaries and wages so bad on student health services? Um, I will get back to you. Huh? To be fair, I will, I will look into that and get back to you. I mean, because, I mean... Yep. I look at two things. I look at how big the first budget is and how much it changes. Right. But when I see a million nine and it were 263, that's a big percentage, like 13.6. Okay, that's my first question. The next one, go all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Fund balance. Future yes. insurance costs, 806,000. Yes, so that was, we we had, um, actually, can I grab one item? Sorry. Mm -hmm. sure. So we have. So within our general fund, we carry different types of fund balance within the general fund. Some of it is restricted. So even though it's in our 01 operating budget, it's restricted. So that was something that has been on our books. The $800,000 has been on our books for close to 10 years, I believe. And I believe, and once again, Robin kind of set this aside. This money was set aside when they thought and I apologize if I'm not getting this 100% correctly. And if you don't understand, you can tell oh, me. Oh, no, it was, it, was, it was related to um, retiree drug cost. So at one retiree point... Retiree what cost? I'm sorry. Um, prescription. Okay. They thought that the board was going to have to fund more of that. So they were required to set aside more funding for it as part of restricted cash. However, that didn't happen. And so this $800,000 has been sitting there for, I think, close to 10 years that we don't have to use for the future insurance. So we're costs. using that to balance last year's budget. And we're help, part of it, we're helping it, yes. I mean, because this has been a problem to me for a while when we, you start using, you know, fund balances and stuff for reoccurring cost because you're gonna, you're gonna be in trouble one day. Mm -hmm. And we're in trouble. We've said just before, we're, 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 we're heading in the wrong years. direction. Mm -hmm. yep. Now I look at this thing on the far right side now Six hundred eighty-nine thousand three hundred forty-one cents. Yes, sir. That's what we're short this year. Yes, sir. In our operating. 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 Yes, not in, in our not in our restricted funds. Not restricted, but this is operating. Because you have, can you just explain sure. to them their overall? You yep. have different categories. And yep. So once again, our so right, our our fund our general fund is our operating funds. Mm -hmm. Some of the fund balances that we're required to keep on hand are for they're restricted. So. One of the examples is um, for accrued leave. Obviously, we have to. We don't expect all of our employees to quit on the same day, and for us to pay out everyone's accrued leave. But we are required to have that cash. It's a liability, right? And we're required to actually have the cash. Mm -hmm. So that's where some of the restricted fund balances come in. And the other one is encumbrances. So all of our purchase orders that carry forward that we encumber the funds for, we have to have the cash on hand for those as well. So, and this is. I have an update later to go into a little bit more about that too, but for twenty four or twenty five. Yes, correct. For twenty four. Okay. I'll wait for them. Okay. <laughs> and if I could, so initially, this is now what we needed for 
this year that we were short. That's correct. And so I think to it just that's it, say something correct. about the 1.3 million that we initially asked the commissioners for, we pulled that back because we no longer had a 1.3 million deficit from right. this year. Um, we had we changed it to where we we didn't need 1.3 million for yes. this. Year. I mean to and close I mean, out this year. We asked Ms. Gass, not, yeah. We asked her to close out the books. Okay probably too early okay um knowing we need we wanted to know the bottom line um there were some additional revenue sources that came yep. in and so that's why that was removed from the commissioner's um, I, request. yep and then i i can go into it now or i can wait until later oh, nice. So we, 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 we've right. sent the commissioners a letter saying yep. we know the million three is off the board and we have um discussed with them We've discussed, yeah, we've discussed with them that we would like to withdraw it and part of that reasoning is once again we with our other restricted fund balances we will not be in a deficit even though we are we will be negative in our operating fund balance our unrestricted fund balance overall in our general fund of 01 we will not have a right. negative balance which is not a great place to be i mean right. it's not like a great place said, to we be. continue yes. to fund right. things that are reoccurring costs out of our kind of rainy day or your year-end right. balances that way and you, can, you can't do that that's not how you run things yeah i, I, I I've got confidence in our numbers to a point, but I've heard a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. And when I see stuff like this, there's still something tells me I I can understand why the, the community, yes, not, okay. not, not the teachers, but the community as a whole, because that's who I hear a lot from, sometimes say, what in the devil are you doing? Well, because, you know, I question if we know. And, and great point. And so we do internal auditing every single year and our auditors are in right now, those reports are due on September 30th. So um, basically, Ms. Gass, numbers will be confirmed or not mm -hmm. on September 30th as that report goes in. Yes. But, but, and I, I agree with that. I mean, yes. And yeah. I would certainly say if anybody wanted to do an independent order of us, I'd have no problem. Absolutely. I, I, I'd say open it up. If it, if it relieves you, do it. I got no problem with that because I think we're there. What concerns me is some of our, our judgments. <laughs> We audit all the time. I understand. I know we get audit. That's why I'm saying we, we get we get audit. So I'm not worried about that. But it's just I think we have to make sure you know when you budget something, you don't budget right to your nose because right, something right. could go wrong. Right. And it seems like you know if everything goes right, we'll we'll be in the dock and run out of gas. It seems, but lately we've run out of gas a couple miles out to sea. You're right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it concerns me. Yep. It's very concerning. Absolutely. When you have the rising cost of insurance every year at 8%, when you have a blueprint that's asking for employees to have, you know, $3.6 million of our budget is just for well, and, and, and that's why I think just for might salary have to enhancements, and say, not, not enhancements of um, insurance. That was another $3.3 million. So you have $3.6 million in salary enhancements. You got another $3.3 million in, you know, your... Um, insurance piece insurance. of it and then you got the cost of doing business when you triangulate those out you don't have enough money at the end of the day you know, right. and, and i think that that's where this board's got to step up and say we can't do it you know some of these decisions we're making i know people i mean you know what we have to do to make this balanced budget it's not going to be pretty and i'm i'm, right. I'm i've said it's not sustainable and it's going to i'm afraid it's going to be worse next year than right. it is this year and the one thing I'll look at is September the 30th, our school enrollment. Right. If, if we get if we get three to 400 kids, new kids in our school system, great. we're going good. We'll be fine because I'm making that. Yeah. But if we, if, if, if we only see 20 or 30, we're going to be in the same boat we are right now, if not worse. Well, the state, as you said before, is not, not stepping up. So and they're the not, commissioners they're, and they're, come forward with 6.2, and we just talked about numbers, right? 3.6, 3.3, the cost of doing business. They're coming up, but we, but the state's not paying theirs. We got 800,000 and 273 of that had to go to one school. It was very I, restricted. I, I agree with that, but we know the state's not going to do it. We can talk about it. The state is not going to do it. I think Shannon and I were at a, a thing, a retreat with, you were there, and people stood up. The state told us. No, Blueprint's great. Blueprint's great, but we're not going to fund it for you. I mean, right to your face. I mean, they didn't even bat, bat an eye. I think the exact words were figure it out. Yeah, figure Correct. it out yourself. Figure it out. Go to yeah, your commissioners out. and tell them you need more money. I mean, it's not yeah, our problem. That we That's what they said. As well. There's, <laughs> yes, they did. We're pushing that blueprint. And you're, yeah. Well, but they're also going to do online legalize gambling. online gambling on your phone to help pay I for I mean, the and the difference. governor has publicly come out and said that there's obviously funding concerns with the blueprint, but that it's going to take time. And, and but, we, but, we don't have time, and they're not moving any of the targets. You got to meet this mark by this date, and this yep. mark by this date, 
And, I mean, but until a big you know, county that has pool, and there's only about four of them or five of them in this state you're right. that raise enough up feet about it, they could care less about Queen Anne's County. Well, right. 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 And, and we are just, we might be the first ones out in front, um, but there's several other districts that are right behind us financially um, running with the exact same condition that we are in right now. Thank you, Ms. Cass. Any other questions about the category transfers? I get a motion. Make a motion to approve the FY24 budget category transfers. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, feasibility study. It's very close. Good evening, President Bennett, Vice President Bent, board members, executive team, Dr. Salins. Uh, my name is Daryl Barraclough. I'm the supervisor for facilities and design, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, first item on my list for the, this evening is the approval uh, and award of the feasibility study for the Centerville Middle School project uh, as required by the Administrative Procedures Guide for the Maryland public school construction program, a feasibility study is required for all projects seeking replacement or major renovation that would demolish more than 50% of the existing building. Um, this feasibility study uh, will uh, explore two different uh, uh, school sites, two different uh, campuses, and, and plan for two different schools. One of them in the, in the first priority of this is obviously the Centerville Middle School project. Uh, they will be looking at the Centerville Middle School uh, project site as it currently sets for the uh, possible renovation and replacement of that school on that site. But they've also been the architect has also been tasked with looking at this facility as a renovation site for either Centerville Middle School or renovation or, or a new site for a CTE program that would relieve a lot of the uh, enrollment pressure that, that's currently seen at our two high schools. Um, high school that, that we have opted to choose uh, to select for this project is Wheeler Goodman Massick Architecture and Interiors. They're the project uh, architect who is currently involved in the feasibility study for Centerville Middle School. And uh, the second reason why they were selected is they were also the architect who uh, developed the feasibility study for this building when it went through uh, the uh, uh, prospect of being renovated as the central office. So they have a lot of existing information, uh, a lot of reports, and a lot of other information that's going to uh, assist them in furthering their, their study for this building. So uh, we are uh, seeking the approval for $137,816 or $860, uh, and the funding source is FY2020 bonded local CIP funds. I'm glad you brought up about the, the, this building originally because didn't we not get a feasibility study yes. even more recently than that to find out if because we knew from our whoever did a study that it was going to cost more to renovate this building than to build a new building. Did we and not already know that? That's that's correct. And that fe that feasibility study went through looking at this building versus new construction. And exactly as you said, um, it was going to be uh, equally as expensive if not more expensive but it was, but it was also yeah. going to be uh, less efficient because this building uh, is originally constructed as a high school and has you know has large uh, wide hallways that are 12 feet 15 feet in many cases that would typically be lined with lockers so that kids are standing in front of their lockers unloading books and those sorts of things so we're not looking for I'm, i guess i'm wondering why we need a new feasibility study when we had it done for the feasibility for this building that feasibility study was looking at this building as used for the central office it would be looking at this this building as used for either the potentially new site with uh, it being the middle school with with significant renovations as a middle school or potentially a CTE program right but didn't we say the first feasibility study the reason why we're giving it to this company just automatically is because they were part of the feasibility study to look at this as a central office way back when well, in, in their doing that, they have a lot of the structural analysis and all the other reports that they have available to them that they looked at three years ago when they looked at the, this facility at, for, for reuse. 
if we brought another architect in, they'd be generating a lot of that information from scratch. Okay, so we're not we're not looking at demolishing this building. Well, because well, it's just a 50%. I'm looking at 50%. Like, can we demolish oh, no, it? No, 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 no. Not that, 49% of it that, not need a feasibility study. That 50% is pertaining to Centerville Middle School. So I thought we were told before that Centerville Middle School could not be renovated because the way it was built, we had to build a whole new school because it was essentially built like a pole, pole barn. And the way that the classrooms were set up, there was, the, the couldn't be built onto. The state requires us to look at renovating that facility. We don't have space. And, and they will not support a new new structure until we can justify as a school system that, that providing a replacement school is, is a better fit from a program standpoint and, and a better fit from a monetary standpoint. But so we have to go through. Some kind of like building code that that would already render it not possible to renovate to begin any, any, with? Anything with enough money could be renovated. You might only have one door well left, but it could oh, be well, renovated. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's the thing. They don't want to get in the middle of, there's, they want both options looked at. It's just the way, I mean, I've seen that. They, they actually require four different options. One option, I mean, it, it goes from from zero to to a hundred percent of of what they what they look at, they, uh, the state wants to see if you do absolutely nothing to the building, just leave it as it sets. How will it fit with your educational program? Obviously, it's it's not going to fit with our educational program. Then they say, okay, if if we did a a minor renovation to that facility, how will it how will it uh, accommodate your program? And then they look at the renovation, the full renovation of that facility. They look at the impacts. They look at all the different things from a monetary standpoint, from an impact on the education, um, impact on the students, all of that. And then they look at the fourth option, which is a complete teardown and replacement school. So the state wants to see all four um, avenues explored so that the state can see that we've done our due diligence in, in preparing a, a, a project for them to approve and fund. But it says here that it's required for all projects seeking replacement or major renovation that would demolish more than 50% of the existing building area. The first two options don't do that. So why do we have a feasible? Correct, but we're, we, we are seeking a renovation or a replacement. We're, we're, we're pushing for a replacement school. Okay. And so you're saying though, I think I misunderstood. Were you saying that this company did the feasibility study just the most recent for this? I thought you said they did the feasibility study when we were looking at this when we turned it into initially the, the central office from No, 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 no. They looked at this the four years, they the looked at this years facility three to four years ago whenever the feasibility study was done looking at this building to renovate as the central office, as the new central office. And, and that was brought up a lot by the general public because this was Central High School and alumni is here and we don't tear schools down in the Queens County. I mean, there's still one in Crumpton. Uh, and that's some of the, I think, the pressure for the commissioners, because once we vacate this building, it's no longer our building, right. it's the commissioners. And that's probably a good thing for us. We don't have to maintain it. So then the commissioners decide what they're gonna do. I I'm just confused the on- Once, once the, our Board of Education building, new office building is completely funded by the county. No state funds are in it. The decision was made to build a new building out there, This not to renovate this. Next year, when we move there, this building will be vacated by us. It will then belong to Queen Anne's County itself. We did give them an, now, uh, what we'd like them to do. We, we have asked. mentioned that we, we have crowding at Queen Anne's County High School. We could maybe take keep the historical part to keep some people happy and take the rest of this back part, which this is, I think, the newer part back here. Yes. And then make this to a CTE program. But and that would be up to them, not not us. That would be our input, but they'd be the ones funding it. So yes, it's going to be up to okay. them. So the, the feasibility study, then they could decide whether this could be a new CTI or a new CTE, sorry, <laughs> or a new central. It could, the be, CMS. It, could be, it could be like the suburbs, so school be an auction house or a laundry mat or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Whatever they want. Yes. I mean, and they got a problem. But we have, we have made the suggestion that we have eight programs mm -hmm. um, and what programs would come in here, what that would look like. Right. And so we've offered them some guidelines for what we think to revitalize this as an educational facility. The county government also had a committee of various alumni businesses and basically <clears throat> at the conclusion of um, all the information was presented that the county would truly like to see this stay some kind of educational component mm -hmm. within the uh, mm -hmm. within the town
I would like to say one more thing, just to maybe put some folks' minds at ease. The feasibility study, once it is prepared, does come back before the board for review and approval. So it's, it's not going to be uh, an approval here tonight, and then you guys never see or hear anything about it other than, you know, hearsay or whatever. But it, it, it will be a formal presentation once it is completed, and it does require board approval before it goes to the state. So and it's possible so, if they get to certain points during this you know, thing, it could come and give us an update. Right. That would be, you know, that would be possible because I think we'll have a new board up here and I think they, in all fairness, they could see it because they're going to be inheriting some stuff. They could also see what's happening and, you know, get an update on it. That's true. Not going to change much, but at least say, okay, here's what we've done and here's what, you know, we're going and then if the board members have any questions, be, they could ask it. Absolutely. I knew about the 58,000. So the existing conditions evaluation, is that for both? Is that central Centerville in here? Yes. Because do we think the existing conditions in this building has changed in four years? Well, it, the, the, it's not that the existing conditions have changed. It's, it's looking at the existing yes. conditions for a different use. Right. I mean, you're looking it at say that it just says mm -hmm. existing conditions evaluation. So instead of looking at it for office space, correct, we'd be looking at it as a right. school space, which is correct. It is really is very actually. Yeah, I mean, the different. outcome of the the feasibility study that was done for this building four years ago ha is going to have a very different outcome because the program that was trying to fit in this building. Was, was that of an office space. The program that's going to try to fit into this building is going to be completely different. So the existing conditions are going to, to yield different, okay, di so, different results. So what's the advantage of having this company do it again? Well, the, the advantage are they, they are the company that is engaged in the educational specifications for Centerville Middle School. So they're going to basically move from one phase right into the next phase, which is going from ed specs going to the feasibility study. And then the other advantage is, is that they were the architect and engineering team with their consultants who did the evaluation for this facility. <laughs> And, you know, when they, when they do this, they're going to know, and, I mean, it's not a hard thing to figure out, well, what are load-bearing walls? We have yeah. tunnels in here, oh, mechanical yeah. tunnels right. in this building that's been a problem for years. We've got a roof that I think is some of it's slate, so you're going to have load structure differences, and they've already looked at that stuff. So they're going to have they're on the ground running, even though we're telling them now we want, you know, a pickup truck, not a sports car. <laughs> but at least they know the, it, what it looked like before they started with it. Well, it just seems like still 60000 to reevaluate. It just seems like a lot of money. Us to doing business. Yeah, the majority of that is going to be Centerville Middle School. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Um, for this, I do think this would be a good opportunity to maybe, since we are in open session, because I know we get a lot of blowback about the new Board of Education building, and now looking at this to maybe, you know, I'm sure the next thing will be like, well, you, you know, you guys are getting a new building, and then now you're looking at, you know, putting students back in here. Uh, maybe good time to explain that this wasn't our, you know, mo this is commissioner money, like Mr. Smith just said, uh, going towards the new building and not, you know, it's, not, it's not operating, it's capital. Right, Correct. which is bonded money, mm -hmm. which is a lot different than your And it would not money. have gone to a school. Correct. No, right. no, that's what I mean. It school. wouldn't have gone Correct. to a school. If it yes. didn't do the central office, it wouldn't have gone to a school. Count, Actually, count this involved. doesn't have anything to do with the central office. No. The, this, this. Oh, right. We're just we're we're addressing it because that was a concern with. The we we always hear, no matter how many times you say it, they, they, take it out of that other people bucket, don't understand bucket, why. It doesn't no. work like that. And it, you know, yeah. look, mm -hmm. talking about bad timing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like driving up a new car and you can't make your house payment. Yeah. But you know, the the building is separate. You know, it's bonded money. I think that it used to be about seventy five thousand for a million for 20 years that's what the, you know so that's what they they're, they're figuring they got their bond rating and stuff like that and i mean in all fairness to the commissioners from what their president told me is that he's been trying to do this for seven years so the yep. timing is wrong there's never um, a good time there was never it. a good time and then COVID hit and you know there was lots of changes so um and, you, you know, know it, that price did escalate because of the time but i will say that the project was a 20 million project that came in at 16 million we're on budget on schedule right now mm -hmm. um so that that is one positive thing and, and not to have a lot of confidence in the future, but it will be cheaper to operate that new building than will this one. Yes, so, it will. I mean, if it's, and I'm just going to pick a number, efficient. if it costs us $100,000 in utilities and lights to run this building, it might have cost seventy-five. dollars Yeah. I mean, it's going to be as cheaper to be in that building for us as far as operating costs. Long term, absolutely. Long term, and we're not, you know, but the county's still paying for it because, you know, our capital budgets usually, unless it's a big project, 
about $3 million a year. Mm -hmm. they, they're giving us some capital money just to keep, you know, the schools running. And, you know, and, you know, we do keep our schools in good shape. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a pride. I mean, we, and I'm considering 3% of the budget is all that Sid gets. It's 3% of our budget. This but year. I, I would also like to say, we, we also have to recognize, yes, we are talking about our students and our teachers. This is still a business. Businesses have to be run in a building that you can work in. You, our teachers work in great schools. Our kids go to great schools. The people that run this business should be able to work in a building that the boiler is not running them out of the building because it's about to blow up. We're sitting here with makeshift air conditioners because the ones that used to be in the windows don't work bathrooms that are, you know, Mold. older than me. But what I'm saying is the people that run this school system should also have a decent place to work, just like our children and our teachers have where they go to work every day. So the fact that people keep bashing us about this building really hurts my heart that these guys don't have a decent building to work in. And that's all we're trying to do. Any other questions? It's it's not a two and back. It's not a back and forth, but you feel free to email Correct. or write letters to the board. I think we do, um, but I think the community so, is largely asking for transparency so and open dialogue. Is there any other questions about this? No. Can I get a motion? Make a motion. I'm sorry. Make a motion to do the peaceful study of Center Middle School. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you for that one. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and. Yep, yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, All right. feel free. Yes, keep All right. right there. Uh, next on my, on, my, uh, on my list here is the extension of construction administration services on the central office building. Uh, the project, when it was originally bid um, out for architectural services, had the construction schedule listed as a 12-month um, construction period. The architectural services were uh, awarded to the architect based Based on a 12 month construction schedule. Uh, however, throughout the uh, the design of the project um, and uh, and during that design phase, the uh, construction schedule was determined that a 16 month construction schedule uh, would be required uh, to help fit with some of the long lead times that we're starting to encounter as a result of some of the uh, supply supply chain and other uh, material. Um, limitations on the project. Um, so with that, um, we have a four month extension of construction administrations for the architect and uh, his design team services on the project. Uh, that comes to a total of $55,880 and that will be funded through FY25 local CIP funds. Are there any questions? Um, I thought that, like the extent of this was capped and if there was any more calls to be incurred we were gonna it would have to come out of something would have to be taken away wasn't that what we were told i don't recall i i, I wasn't here when the architect was was awarded uh the, the the architectural services but um i mean i know that his number was based on a 12 month construction duration so he's being uh, required to work 16 months instead of 12 months so he is due additional funding his his contract is is is, is a hard fixed um, contract amount based on a construction duration of 12 months and we're not in and, and, and the project is not a 12 month duration it's 16 months maybe this is maybe the same thing as uh, you're saying we, there's penalties to the contractor for the contractor, yes, that that's right. relating to not, reaching a substantial completion. And we signed a fixed contract that if he hasn't done by then, then there's certain penalties will come if it's not that's, done by that's that time. That's correct. That's for the general contract. The architect started before the contractor and will be to the end. So that's probably why we have a little overlap. Co correct. And, and the biggest thing here is the fact that um, when the project was put together initially, it was assumed that a 12-month duration would suffice. Um, 
a lot of things have come into play since since that time. Um, for example, just something as simple as electrical switch gear. Uh, an order now on electrical switch gear takes 14 months from the time that you put it in to when it arrives on site. So things like, uh, you know, the construction durations really get get skewed for some of these long lead items that that, in, in all honesty, have no uh, no one has any. Uh, ability to to influence whether it be money or or whatever could could possibly be sought. Are we still it's, on schedule for construction? Absolutely, we are on schedule. We're actually um, I hate to say this, but we're a little bit ahead of schedule. But <laughs> I do have a question because he said he's required to be paid for this. But if we don't vote for it, he's not going to get paid for this. Is that correct? Um, it's not that he won't get paid for it. It's that he won't be working those last okay. four months. <laughs> and this, I noticed this da this letter is dated March eighth. Correct. Um, part of that is is related to I, I was waiting for FY25 to come around um, so that we could use 25 money instead of 24. But uh, the money is the money is there. I mean, it, it's it's all related to the uh, central and office. It's capital money. It is capital money. It's all 100% county capital money. But if we have leftover capital money, we're able to move it for something else. Correct. Uh, capital, capital money, we cannot capital. Move capital not money into we, operating. I mean, we can use we it. Can, we we, can, we can move it to another capital yes. project. Okay. We can request the commissioners say, look, we're three million dollars under budget on this project. Can we now do an upgrade on our curbs, or can we blacktop a, a parking lot that you know is is a capital project, not right. an operating or recurring okay. cost? Correct. And we have been keeping a, a, a tally on where we are with with things, and, and some things come in over over expected budget, and some things come in under expected budget. So, any other questions on this? I get a motion. <laughs> Make a motion to extend the construction of administrative services for the new central office building. Second. All those in favor? No. Okay. It's going to be a no for me, too. I'm. I, th this is these kind of things that were optics. We look like, I know things come up, and, and here we are, you know, $56,000 for four months of work that I originally thought we were told I think we were told that the construction was a flat cost. Correct. Uh, not, that's not true. necessarily this is the architect. architecture. Yeah. Since architects run longer, but that, that was money. Mm -hmm. And everybody vote the way they want. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Sh Shannon, how did you vote? Four. So two no and two yay. So that would be. Yeah, it doesn't pass. It doesn't pass. It doesn't pass. Okay. All right. It does pass. It does, does not. not. So what happens now that he does? He doesn't work the last four months, so we don't have anybody overseeing the project for the last four months. We would, yeah, we would not have any architecture or engineering support for the last, for the last four, four months, months of the project, project, which is the most important part when we're trying to finalize everything. When, when, when does he get off? Pardon? When does he stop? Um, it would be 12 months after construction started, and I'd have to go back and look, but I think that was April. So well, next year. At, no, I think it was. A, no, he started in November. I'm sorry, we, we broke so ground he, about he, in he, November yeah, because it was the middle of the cold season. So, so we're going to be finishing up about November of uh, this year. So, so it was even no longer February, March. Well, yeah, about be, five months. Well, yeah, one, one, four, I mean, the only suggestion months. I've had is bring it back to the board at next at the next thing. We do have one board member missing, puts pressure on one guy, but that's what he gets paid for. What's also concerning to me, Helen brought up before, why are we finding out about this now when the letter was dated March 8th, 2024? That was six months ago. He, well, budget. he was waiting for the 25 budget. Correct. So we wouldn't use this year's money, but next year's. But still, isn't that something you think you'd want to let the board know? We're out of money for the, you know, the contractor. We're not, we're not out of money. We're not out of money. I was just looking. No, I meant he wants more money because, you know, it's extending the time now for an extra four months of $56,000. He, he, he signed a contract for one year. They asked him to work another four months. To me, it would be the same as if you have a teacher working 10 months and you ask him to work all through the summer, you better pay him. I mean, he's working more time. He's working more time. If we don't want him to he, work, he, that's fine. I mean, I mean, he basically signed a contract based on the letter. These are all questions that we had. I'm sorry. I don't want to keep harping on it, but we've he we had the opportunity to ask questions. We voted. We can bring it back up um, at the next meeting. Is that a, I mean, there's nothing we're I mean, they, doing if this we need, a, we need, a, you need mm -hmm. three votes. That's so. right. Okay. All right. Next item.
Next on the list is the makeup air replacement units for Kent Island High School. Um, this project is being awarded to, uh, we're seeking award to Johnson Controls Incorporated, and this is to install uh, three new 300 uh, MBH makeup air units to pull fresh air in, to the, in from the outdoors to provide required fresh air to the interior of the building. The contract price is $130,552, and funding sources are uh, 2021 capital funding through the Healthy School Facility Fund, which is state money, uh, FY 2016 capital bonded CIP funds, and reallocated uh, operating budget and local CIP funds for $36,000. Any questions? Yeah, so reallocating the Board of Education's operational budget. Not operational capital. Well, it says operational oh, budget. Oh, I'm sorry. It would come from either capital or operational, and that would be the, the operational funds, yes, from from our, from our side of things. Okay. And then didn't we have to do all fresh air stuff during COVID? Didn't we have to do some kind of air exchange? I'm sorry, Mr. Maybe you're better yes, on but this. So if you recall, we replaced the chiller. We replace all the EMS systems at Kennelon High School, and the there are makeup air handlers there now. They're just over 20 some years old, and they, they need to be replaced. So these were replaced with the ones that are 20. So they're not working. They're on their last leg, if you want to say that. I know that we have sometimes. I'm just. I know in the past we have looked at. At some point, your car, or your chiller, or your units start costing more to repair than to just replace. That's, a, that that's where we're, we're at, and that's that why we have part of the Healthy School Initiative to help pay for that. Okay. And by law, you have to have air circuiting through By school ASHRAE school. standards, yes. And the fiscal year 2016 um, county bonded, that was money that wasn't spent, or this some of it was spent before with this? That, that is money that the county set aside specifically for this project from their FY 2016 budget. Um, and actually, this, this, this project has actually been before the board two other times uh, for approval, um, and it had passed. It's, uh, how do I say this? Um, there were issues with finding the local money and finding the, 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 the fiscal year money from the county budget. And we've been working with the county to get that all sorted out. The, the state money has always been there. It was just a, a matter of trying to uh, iron out the fiscal year 2016 number. Okay. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the uh, approved JIC simplex replacement contract. And the budget sources, just to have it on record. Fiscal impact $130,552. Budget source FY 2021 state capital funding through HSFF 45000 FY 2016 county bonded CIP funds $48,872 reallocated operational budget or local CIP funds $36,680. Yeah, second. Second, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next on this case, did you vote? Yeah, I said I. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Just make sure we get it accurate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just the raising hands was getting loose. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, next. All right, next is the approval of the award for a change order for the additional wall panels for Queen Anne's County High School. Um, as everyone, most everyone should be familiar with. Um, Queen Anne's County High School is currently underway, about 90 to 95 percent done, uh, complete with a roof replacement on the entire high school. Um, that project was originally bid uh, with a base bid, including the installation of pre-finished metal wall panels on the high sections above the auditorium and a small portion of the second floor area opposite uh, near the uh, media center. 
a project bid alternate uh, was included at the time of bids uh, to provide additional wall panels on the high, high roof section or the high wall section of the gymnasium. Uh, the alternate price received on bid day was $359,772. Uh, at the time that we were awarding that project, state and local funding did not allow for us to accept that bid alternate, so the project was awarded with base bid only, and the contractor has been working diligently through the summer to complete the, uh, to complete the roof installation on that school. And as I said, they're about 95% complete. Um, some of you might have seen the uh, the white wall panels that are on the uh, the, the side facing uh, the main road out front there. The purpose of the panels, um, uh, due to the age of the uh, the masonry on that building, uh, the brick mortar and some of the associated flashings are just kind of reaching their limitations on age and uh, it's letting water into the facility. So what we uh, opted to do in lieu of uh, costly brick remediation, we opted to cover the, uh, the brick surfaces with a membrane and then cover that membrane for protection of UV with, with metal wall panels. Um, and as I stated, the, uh, the bid alternate to uh, also include the rear gymnasium area uh, was not able to be taken on bid day. However, uh, we have uh, been working with the general contractor um, and uh, given uh, source availability, the fact that they're already on site, uh, and along with the fact that um, I pretty much believe that roofing projects are starting to become fewer and fewer for, for folks out there. So the, the market is starting to uh, not be as plentiful as it was six or eight months ago when this project were bid, uh, was bid. They have come back to the table and offered to do the same scope of work that the bid alternate was for a total of $211,000. Um, and that money is av available in remaining uh, local CIP funds uh, for that project. So we would like to award a change order for the contractor to proceed with the installation of wall panels on the gymnasium so that we could uh, solve some of the uh, moisture and water infiltration areas in that, or moisture problems in that area. The original Questions? contract, we installed pre-finished metal wall panels, but even with the original scope and doing the panels, we knew that we were going to keep leaking after that. I, mean, I guess I'm we, we didn't have money to award it, so we didn't have but a choice. We knew it was going to keep leaking, and that would just. Yes, ma'am. So the original low bid on this was three hundred and fifty-nine thousand seven seventy-two. The bid alternate, when it was bid on bid day, was three hundred fifty-nine thousand, and, and that was done by the low. That was the bid of the low bidder, and the low bidder is the person on the roof right now doing the. Doing so the roof same contractor. Work. Same contractor, yes. So they're now agreeing to do it for almost half of what they did the first 200, time. $211,000. A lot of things have happened in the market. They're on the job site. They don't have another job to go to. So they're looking at trying to save manpower for another couple, two or three months for sourcing these panels and, and keeping keeping men employed. And then how long, once it, these are installed, how long is the lifespan on these before uh, those, they those really need? Those, those, those wall panels are probably a 45 year lifespan. It's not a roof, it's on the side. Correct, it's vertical. Yeah. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? Make a motion for additional wall panels for Queens County High School for the amount of $211,000 by funding source of FY25 CIP funds. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next. Okay. Next is the surveillance camera additions to Stevensville Middle School. Um, we, uh, we did receive funding uh, through the county and our local CIP for uh, surveillance camera installations at two schools. Um, one was uh, Mattapique Elementary School. The other was um, Stevensville uh, Middle School. Uh, we walked the uh, project site with the contractor. Um, and given the scope of the work that we have um, shown for this school, it comes out to $51,080.17. Um, a few points to, to clarify on this number. Um, this was um, 
a uh, project that is being awarded through the IDIQ. Uh, you may recall um, approximately six or seven months ago, we came before you uh, with uh, bidding an IDIQ for various surveillance camera work, access control work, and uh, two contractors participated in that process. Um, the low bid was awarded the IDIQ, and this number is based on those quoted numbers that they provided um, for surveillance camera work, um, labor rates, and any e extra and additional items that, that are above and beyond the IDIQ. So this number is in full compliance with that uh, contract that came before you previously. So you're saying that the county funds for the 93,000, we've already done one school? Yes, yes, uh, it, and it fell below the $50,000 threshold. That's why it did not come before the board for approval. Um, and uh, b between the two projects, uh, we have a surplus of around $247 between uh, these two projects and the $93,000 um, what was allocated for the two schools for, for surveillance cameras. Any other questions? You know, I, I, this is one I'd have no problem with because I think safety in our schools are adamant. I think we do a good job with it. I give Joe credit for that. But also, yeah. I give the county credit. They put resource officers, you know, out of their budget or the yeah. county budget mm -hmm. in our system, which is not in our operating budget. Yeah. And that's a major uh, another thing. And I, you know, I tell people, I have grandkids. I feel they're as safe in school as they are anywhere. Yep. Right. And we've had, a, I mean, as an aside, is a lot of grant money that we've received that with Joe's, that's yeah, that's the glory. So, yeah, it's, we've really come a long way in a couple of years. Any other questions about this? Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the purchase order for the Skyline Technology Solution to install additional surveillance cameras at Stevensville Middle School. Fiscal impact $51,080.17. Budget source the FY25 County CIP funds. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And All right. last. Last one. Um, replacement of water cooled heat pump at Stevensville Middle School. Again, this is the replacement of uh, one heat pump unit that has uh, since uh, failed on the project. Um, uh, the award we are looking to award to is a company uh, by the name of Energy Transfer Solutions. Uh, they are out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, but they are the uh, sole source provider and service company servicing the type of units that are in this school, the water, um, the water pump heats, uh, water source heat pump units. Um, and this is a contract award for $59,815 with a 5% contingency uh, in case we find anything once the work is underway. And um, again, we do have a, uh, a contract we're ready to sign with these folks as well. And this is being funded through um, FY25 CIP funds and the overage of $12,000 would come from local CIP or our operating, operating budget. So this would be an emer excuse me an emergency because it's failed. It is. It, it has failed. Yes. Any other? And it is out of warranty. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the energy transfer solutions um, re replacement of the existing failing heat recovery unit at Stevensville Middle School. Fiscal impact sixty-two thousand eight hundred six dollars. Budget source FY twenty twenty-five county CIP funds. Second. Um, all those, did you have a question? Nope. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, schedule for a break. You guys want to press on? Keep going. All righty. Uh, informational items. First one is uh, Mr. Evans, and you can just go right from 8 1 to 8 2. Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins members of the board, executive committee. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, supervisor of student services. Before you tonight is policy 528, title nine for a first read. The updates in this policy reflect the new regulations released by the U.S. Department of Education in April of 2024. Are there any questions? No, I believe this, we had in-depth conversations about this with the change um, with our attorney some time ago. Did anyone have any other questions about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh -huh. Did you have, um, there was both okay, right? On yeah, the regulations there. All right, gotcha. All right, Mr. Bearclaw, back for the comprehensive maintenance plan presentation. That was a short break, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the uh, 2024 comprehensive maintenance plan uh, it, and we are presenting tonight for information only uh, the purpose of the comprehensive maintenance plan uh, is to communicate the uh, LEA's stakeholders including state LEA's intentions for the coming fiscal year for its facilities maintenance program the CMP, the CMP plays an integral role in the development of QACPS's CIP and the CIP in its final stages preparation will be presented to the Board of Education in October. Um, the preparation of the comprehensive maintenance plan is something that is required by COMAR. Uh, it, does, it is required to be prepared uh, each, each year. Um, the facilities prepares that, presents it to the board, and it does require board approval prior to being sent to the state for their review. Uh, the submission timeline for the uh, for the CIP is mid October. So the timeline for this is the presentation uh, this evening for information only, and then we will come back before the board October second at that board meeting seeking approval. So the relationship between the CIP and the operating budget, uh, the data that goes into the development of the CIP, the CMP assists in the preparation of the, the capital improvement program and the operating budget. This is accomplished by several factors. Some include the number of work orders that are generated for particular systems, whether they be HVAC, roof, kitchen equipment, etc. Those are evaluated to determine which system needs, needs attention, um, and then that is what drives the CIP. And earlier this evening we were talking, or I guess the CIP was brought up about how it, how it is very fluid and it does change every year. So, so we do look at that. Um, if you do look at, at the full um, CMP, it's about uh, 900 and some odd pages because it, it does include all of the work orders that were done for the last fiscal year. Um, some of the other things that are be, that, that are looking at, looked at are the annual roof and bleacher inspections, um, so we can uh, begin to look at whether repairs or replacements are needed for those sorts of things. Um, let me see uh, scheduled maintenance and replacement. Um, uh, one of the things that we have done is um, we have um, in, in the CIP, you'll see we have interior painting, exterior painting, uh, milling, pavement. Um, we have playground replacement. All those different things now are, are, are set to a schedule so that it can help um, kind of drive the CIP for, for not only this coming year, but for the, for the outgoing years as well. Um, those are some of, that's a screenshot of a couple of the... Um, My chart. Mm -hmm. And any questions on the CMP? I know it's pretty quick. I think we do a good job keeping her, you know, you got to stay ahead of things. I think, I think maintenance does an outstanding job of doing what they do with what they have. And we've got, I think, what, 14 million square feet of buildings? 1.4. One, <laughs> 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.4 million. With 11 maintenance. With 11, yeah, with 11 maintenance mm. people. That's crazy. I did see one principal work on the door one day. <laughs> What's that, sir? I saw one principal at one of the schools working on the front door one day, so. <laughs> Takes all. <laughs> Any questions? That okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Ms. Gass. You're probably tired of seeing Daryl and I. Hi, what, hi, President Bennett, um, Dr. Saline, members of the board, executive team. Once again, my name is Whitney Gast. Um, I have a I have a statement prepared just to discuss our FY24 closeout situation right now. Um, so on June 30th, 2024, 
This board approved Queens County Public Schools requesting an additional 1.3 million from our county commissioners to cover, set, cover our deficit spending in 24. Based on further review and finalizing our 24 closeout, we no longer need to make this request. Our expenditures were $6,533,148 over our total revenue in 24 in our operating budget. However, due to our other restricted fund balance amounts in our general fund, we will not end 24 in a deficit in our general fund. Like we are expected to end 24 with a total general fund balance of $1,351,133 in restricted funds that's pending any additional requirements by our auditors that they may request, which will our audit concludes on September 30th. That, that's restricted funds. Correct. So they are restricted. So we are allowed to use them freely. But, but, but usually we, we have a policy of a, what's it, one to? It's one to five percent. One to five percent, which we're down to zero. We are, we're technically still negative in our yes. So, so I mean, that's something that we got this board <coughs> used the fund balance to balance this current past yes. budget, mm -hmm. but we Correct. have to start making a conscious effort to, to try get to that back up, Correct. at least to the minimum. Correct. And actually, Ms. Gass will be working on a three-year plan of how to do that, and we will bring that to the board for your review. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of Ms. Gass? Oops. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, it's time for public comment again. Is anyone signed up? Yep. We have three. Okay. Faith East. Hello, my name is Faith East. Um, and what I'm city a teacher. Are you what city do you live in? Centerville. I'm a teacher at Ken Island Elementary School. I've been before this board before and spoken to you on multiple occasions. Um, I want to remind you that one of the things that you ask teachers to do on a regular basis is to take the temperature of our students, not their physical temperature, but their emotional well-being and their emotional temperature. Okay. Currently, my temperature is sad. I'm very sad. I've been with this county since 2007. When I was hired in this county, we were a family. We work together and our county has changed so much. One of the ways that our county has changed is by um, betrayal, okay? I feel betrayed as a parent, as a teacher, and as a part of this community. Our union came to you last year and worked with you to create a contract that everybody signed couple months down the road, not even, we were talking furlough days. Those furlough days, even though you approved the contract, basically negated that contract if we had been furloughed. And now because we've asked for financial information, my understanding is it was not provided to the union. We're talking about letting people go. Okay. Um, Sorry, you have been sitting up there this evening and telling us that it's the state, it's the federal government with Title I, okay? You are my representative. I voted to get you on that board. I want to know how you are helping to hold the state responsible and the federal government responsible for what they are doing. They're passing all these laws telling us we have to do this. They're not providing the funding. What are you doing to get that fixed? We as teachers are here for our kids. I am hoping in my heart of hearts that all of you are honestly looking at the bottom line because the bottom line is these kids. They're the ones that are going to go into classrooms and not have the support they need because we had to let teachers or support staff go. It's not fair to them. Everybody comes to you with problems pretty much. Okay. One lady spoke about how it, it makes her sad that everybody's talking about the board of education, the new building, a, a suggestion would be transparency. Thank you.
Stephanie Anthony. Hi, Stephanie Anthony. I'm a teacher at Kennard Elementary School and I live in Centerville. Um, before I start what I really wanted to say, I just want to mention I know that the um, the amount of money where that comes from for the building for the new Board of Ed is a separate fund. I get that. But if you haven't been in Centerville Middle School, I advise you to go and check it out because their building is in the same sad state as this building. As a parent, when I took my daughter last year for sixth grade, this year for seventh grade, I was pretty taken back by that building. So just a suggestion to, to keep that in mind for some renovations. Um, I understand that we got money from the county. I understand that they gave us over maintenance of effort, but I also understand that the people sitting before me signed our contract and ratified it in June. We relied on this board to bargain in good faith. We didn't agree to anything on our end that we can't hold up, yet we, the union, seem to be the problem. And I just want to clarify by union, majority of your employees here in Queen Anne's County are the union, not just the people that you see come and talk, not just the ones that sit down at the table with you all and have these discussions. Majority of your employees are the union. We have not said that we would not meet. And I know that because I've been a part of those discussions. What we said was we will not meet until we've been given the information we've been requesting since July, which I was just shared a folder today during my work day that allegedly has some of the requested information that we asked for. Haven't been able to view it because I received it during my work day and I came here after work. So here I am. So later tonight, after I put my personal kids to bed, pack lunches, grade some papers, I'll sit down and look at that folder to see what was given to us. In 2012, we did not use six uh, furlough days. I remember that very clearly. It was only three. And there was a grant written to compensate for majority of those days. It only ended up affecting one day. I did share this information at the table with you all this summer. Um, and I remember it very clearly because that's the year I had my first child, who's now in seventh grade. And one furlough day hit pretty hard as a new mom. Um, so it was not six. I don't know where six came from. It was only three and it ended up only being one day out of our pay because of the grant. Have we thought about applying for a grant to help offset that compensation for your staff? Is that an option that we could think about? We can blame whoever we want for the budget shortfall. We can keep blaming the union if it makes you feel better. We can blame the blueprint, but in all fairness, I'm pretty sure we were aware of the blueprint before you signed and ratified our contract in June. Regardless of what we want to blame, your budget was short. We built this entire budget on the <laughs> prediction that a certain number of teachers would retire. That's not a way to build a budget. We send out an intent form every January. I fill it out every January saying whether I'm planning on returning to the county or not. Use that data. You collect it. Use it. We knew long before July 18th that we did not have enough employees retiring from this county and we should not have waited till July 18th to try to solve that problem. I teach children. Bus drivers get kids to school. Parents support our students. Nurses help with health. You balance the budget. We trust you to do that. You trust us with the children. So please do your job. That's not on the union. It's on whoever created the budget. Thank you. Lang, Center Rule, Maryland. Um, I first uh, wasn't going to talk tonight, but it kind of struck me right at the beginning where the first line item on the agenda is board involvement. And we didn't hear anything about actual involvement. We kind of heard the soapbox. So maybe we stick to board involvement to start as the agenda has, or we add in soapbox because for board members to take that opportunity to jump the conversation from what is clearly a public that's going to come and talk just thinks kind of in bad taste. So then sitting there throughout the meeting and hearing different parts of it, just kind of quickly there, if we're saying that the last CFO missed a whole document that had millions of dollars of funds that we couldn't actually utilize now from a couple years ago, I don't understand why it would be so strange, so odd, so just unheard of cue in whatever word you want to use that us as the general public would like that same transparency because as we can see things weren't working right around here somebody's missing something somebody's not doing something right when entire pages are missing and weren't accomplished then voted on approved put in the book all that and then suddenly years later now we're realizing it multiple cfos later 
So what else might have gotten screwed up? We just want transparency to see what is there and keep hearing about this transparency thing. Maybe I can't see it. That's a little pun. Um, but we heard about that transparency at the meeting with the county commissioners that we wanted to have this transparency. We're going to be transparent. And that still just doesn't seem to be there. So I just encourage all members of the board, the ones here and the ones not, to maybe kind of go with the same vigor to our financial books as some members of the board took in reference to the books being in our school libraries, maybe we wouldn't have so much of an issue. But I'll conclude with this. We talk about the, the members, the, the place in Annapolis. I drive around Annapolis. I look for the guy that's holding the sign that says, I've got the answers about the blueprint. Haven't found them. So we keep saying, go to Annapolis. Go to here. The county commissioners say, it's Annapolis. It's Annapolis. Between the board, between that, that says it's Annapolis not giving you what you need, the commissioners saying they're not getting what they need. Who is they? Get us the specifics. We know your emails. I know you know we know your emails. Who are they? Get us their emails. Because the email that I got, I just get the response, we've received your email. So let us let's get the pitchforks and go there versus the pitchforks here if it's really you ain't got it. And that's where we need to go. Help us take the pitchforks and torches off of you and take it to Annapolis and start saying, hey, what the hell are you doing? You're screwing our board, you're screwing our students, you're screwing our schools, you're screwing our students, our teachers, our staffs. What the hell? Instead of having to come to you guys, go to our commissioners and do the same thing. So Thank feel you. free to share that with us too versus just go to Annapolis. Thanks. Thank you. Future meetings event September 18th is the next meeting followed by October 2nd uh, at 6 p.m. Can I get a motion to adjourn? We might just want to state that September 18th is not a regular That's the uh, work session. Board work session. Yeah, it's a bird it's work session. Now, October 2nd is the next regular meeting. September 18th is an added meeting. Okay. It's a work session. It's an added, it's an added meeting. meeting. It's an added meeting and then our regular meeting will be October 2nd at 6 o'clock. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.